Hi guys, Brian from Brian Boas here. You've probably heard before that boa constrictors are one of the more challenging types of reptiles to breed. But why is that the case? Well, there are a number of unique characteristics of boa constrictors that make them somewhat challenging. Today I'm going to go over these unique characteristics. So if you're looking to get into boa breeding, be sure to pay attention, and while you're at it, please subscribe to the Brian Boas YouTube channel so you don't miss out on any of my upcoming boa breeding videos. It seems like almost everybody that gets into boa constrictors wants to breed them eventually. But you don't need to breed boas to be successful and to get a lot out of the herb hobby. In addition, there are a lot of species that are a lot more straightforward than boas as far as breeding. And if you are looking for a breeding project, that might be more likely to be successful in a shorter time period, you might want to seek out one of those species. However, it's of course very rewarding to breed boas, so if you are looking to breed boas, hopefully this video will give you some insight into how to overcome some of these challenges. The first challenge is that boas, in general, are not a formula breeding species. What do I mean by formula breeding species? Well, with some herbs, you can basically just follow a formula or recipe, which is basically a set of environmental conditions that will is highly likely to lead to successful breeding. You just get a male and female of that species of a certain age. You condition them often by reducing temperature or changing the lighting period. Then you introduce the animals together and you're pretty likely to have a good shot at getting mating and successful reproduction. With boas, that's not how it works. A regimen that might work for some person might not work at all for someone else. In addition, you might have some boas that will mate under almost any circumstances and lead to a successful birth of babies. Or you might have a pair of boas that under pretty much any circumstances are not going to successfully reproduce. And it's often hard to predict. I once had a litter of Argentine boas, which was actually my second litter of boa constrictors, where I literally put the male and female together for about two hours. In fact, this happened while I was cleaning the cages and I just stuck the male in with the female, not intending to breed them. And they were just together for that two hour period. And then a few months later, my female was gravid. And you know, at the time I didn't even know she was gravid until the end stages where I started to suspect it, but it led to a, a successful litter of 13 babies. And that was with no conditioning or you know, no uh, planning really, because it was basically an accident. However, I've also had animals that I condition based on what's worked for me in the past and has worked for other keepers. They appear to be in prime health. I keep them together for over six months and I witness multiple, mate, multiple copulations as well as numerous breeding activity, but I don't get any babies. So sometimes you just can't tell. You basically have to go on instinct as well as some formula, and you have to really know your animals. Uh, if you breed them year after year, you start to figure out what works for certain animals that might not work for others. The second thing that makes boa constrictors challenging to breed is the age they need to achieve to reach breeding uh, maturity. Basically, for females of locality boas, it's about five years from birth to being ready to breed. Males can get by with about a year younger. And then I would say in general, the morph boas can breed at a year or even two years younger than that. But if we're talking specifically about locality boas, five years is quite a long time. I mean, that's a pretty long-term commitment. A lot of people are gonna give up on something, uh, you know, that takes five years before completing the goal. For example, getting a college degree takes four to five years. You know, learning to play a musical instrument can take five years. A lot of people just don't have the patience and perseverance to endure. So this makes breeding boas uh, somewhat challenging. With some locality boas, the females may not even be ready after five years. It might take them six or even seven years. And sometimes people will try to power feed and grow a boa faster, but it's really not as much the size as it is the maturity and the age of the boa that lead to successful breeding. The animals need to have a certain amount of muscle mass, which only becomes with maturity, in order to successfully carry and deliver the offspring. 
Another challenge of breeding boas, which especially applies to the locality boas, is the limited availability of many types of boas. With some locality boas, there's literally only a handful of bloodlines that are in the United States, and the countries where these boas originated do not allow any export at this point. So it's going to be nearly impossible to get any fresh bloodlines. This is a Tomatama Venezuela true red tail boa that was uh, bred from a group started by Terry Cullen, who collected these animals. And I don't know of any other sources of these Tomatama Venezuela boas in the United States. I have a pair of them. Um, I have some other Venezuelan boas, which are the Rio Bravo bloodline, which are similar to these, but they're not the Tomatama locality. So this presents kind of a quandary. Do I just breed the pair that I have, and which will lead to inbreeding after uh, you know, one or two generations and deal with that consequences? Or do I cross them with the non-Tomatama Venezuela boas? They are very similar in appearance, but possibly lose the Tomatama locality. And there's no easy answers to this. But the point is, if you want to breed a certain type of locality boa, you may have to wait many years before you even have the opportunity to acquire animals of that type. You might have to form a relationship with the breeder that has a group of these animals, just so you know that maybe he or she is expecting a litter in three years and you can get on a waiting list, um, just to ensure that you're able to get these animals. One characteristic of boa constrictors which sets them apart from many other snakes is that they're live bearers. And while on the surface this may appear to simplify the breeding because you don't need to worry about incubating eggs, it actually makes breeding boas more challenging. And this is due to the amount of time that a female has to invest in the reproductive cycle. Between pairing up the female with the male and getting the babies born can be as much as nine months. At the minimum, typically it will take about six months so this is a very large chunk of time that the boa has to invest in breeding and reproduction. And it takes away a huge amount of resources and energy. As you know, many female boas feed not too much when they're gravid. Some don't even feed at all. So there's a lot of recovery after breeding. And because of their live bearing status, for most boas, you can only breed them every other year, not every year because it just takes so much out of the female that she needs to recover the next year before breeding again. There are egg laying snakes like pythons and many colubrids which you can breed every year. And in fact, there are some which you can breed uh, two or even three times a year. Some milk snakes will double and even triple clutch, which, you know, I've often seen these animals and I thought, well, well wouldn't that be great if you could do that with boas? And lastly, because boas are live bearers, they're more likely to have issues with giving birth, such as retained unfertilized embryos or difficulty bearing the, having the babies. You can have issues like this with egg laying snakes, but in general, they're not as common. So the fact that they're live bearers actually makes boas more challenging to breed. A challenge with maintaining a colony of breeding boas is that in general, they're larger than your average snake and they take up more space. Now, of course, there are snakes which are much larger, like anacondas and a lot of the giant pythons. And so boas don't have nearly the challenges posed by these giant snakes. But in general, they need bigger cages than most snakes, and you can fit less of them in a given area of space. Most of us reptile keepers have a limited amount of space, and that seems to be what is the limiting factor for how many animals we can keep. Now, of course, there are dwarf boas, and as you know from watching my videos, I love all the dwarf boas like this crawl key. Um, this animal is three years old. She's not going to get that much bigger than this, maybe another foot. So if you keep dwarf boas, you can keep more in a smaller area space uh, compared to the larger boas. Um, in addition, boas in general, they're not as easy to keep in rack systems as some other snakes like smaller colubrids or ball pythons. Of course, you can do it. You can get these big racks that I use for many of my boas. But in general, uh, you know, a snake like a ball python is more adapted to being kept and bred in a rack system. Another issue with breeding boas is finding compatible pairings. You might have a male and a female 
of the same type of boa. They're properly conditioned for breeding. They're in perfect health and ready to breed, and they're just not interested in each other. This might be for some kind of biological reason that we isn't clear to us, or they might just not like each other. I mean, who knows? And this is especially a problem with the true red tail boas like the Suriname male. Many red tail boa males, they're just not good breeders, and I don't know if they're just, they don't have interest, or there's some kind of environmental condition that we're not providing to stimulate them to breed. But this guy actually bred for me the first time this year. This is a six-year-old holdback. First time I bred him, so hopefully this is a good breeder, which is great because he's one of my most beautiful boas. Um, but many, many males just aren't that interested in the females. And in the past, one way to deal with this was is actually to breed two males with a female. And when you throw in a second male, they kind of compete and that stimulates one of the males or both of them to mate with the female. And this isn't done nearly as much these days because I think people want to be sure about the parentage of their babies. They don't want to guess who the daddy is. But this is something that maybe you should think about if you're having issues with your male not showing interest. And then it's also possible to use a shed skin from another male. You put it in the cage with the pairing and it's thought that the smell of the other male on the skin will stimulate the non-interested male to mate with the female. And I've tried this before, not quite sure if it works or not, you know, maybe it's more of a superstition. But um, males that aren't in that interested can be an issue. And sometimes you might have a female that's just not interested in allowing the male to mate with her, or she might not even be fertile for whatever reason. So finding a compatible pairing can be one of the issues that leads to lack of success with breeding boas. The last challenge I'll discuss actually happens after the babies are born. So you've done your homework, you've bred your boa successfully, and you're really excited to have these babies, but now you need to establish the babies. And there are some types of boas which can have issues as far as the husbandry of the neonates. The island boas, such as this hog island boa, are notorious for babies not wanting to feed. And this includes the hog island boas, qual key, cocker key, pearl island, etc. The boas from the islands in the Caribbean. It's not really clear why they don't want to uh, feed. What I found is that of all the types of boas, is the hog islands, which are the hardest to get to feed. And on average, close to half of my babies won't feed voluntarily on live uh, fuzzy mice when they're born. I'm planning on making a video about tricks to get these babies, these challenging babies to feed. So stay tuned for that. But this is definitely one thing you should think about, especially if you're getting into breeding island boas. And then another type of boa that has some uh, husbandry issues with the babies are the true red tails. The true red tails in general feed like pigs and it's not at all hard to get them to feed. But then often you have issues with regurgitation. You know, the animal feeds, but then it vomits up the undigested uh, rodent three to four days later. There are ways to prevent this from happening and to treat animals after they've done this. And I did a video on regurgitation that you could check out if you want. But it can often be very challenging with some animals that regurgitate and get into this cycle where they've regurgitated more than once and it becomes harder and harder to get them back on track. And it's not uncommon for these animals to just kind of wither away and to not make it. So breeding true red tails, one of the challenges is just getting the babies established and going. So those are some challenges with breeding boas for you to consider. I will say we're definitely making advancements in overcoming some of these challenges. And I'm very confident that as time goes on, it's going to get more and more straightforward to breed boas in spite of these challenges. I also believe that overcoming these challenges is exactly what makes boas so rewarding to breed. So I hope this video was somewhat helpful. As always, please feel free to shoot me any questions or comments you may have. Thanks for watching and enjoy your boas.